HDR or high dynamic range is one of those fairly often discussed Linux features, and the conversation usually starts with, hey, how do I enable HDR? And ends with, Linux doesn't support HDR. But is it really that simple? Well, kinda yes and no, but before we get into that, let's do a brief introduction on what HDR actually is. To put it simply, it is a way for your display to show a much wider array of colours. So on a display with a standard dynamic range, which is what you're probably using right now, it is totally functional for showing most of the colours you want to be seeing. But where it really falls apart is with showing anything that is really bright. Let's say for example you have the sun, a light bulb, a headlight on a car, or anything else that is supposed to be bright. Let's say right now you go and record a light bulb that you've got turned on. If you then go and play that back on a regular display, it's not going to look Right, Like, you can obviously tell it's a light bulb, but compared to the rest of the background, it won't look bright. Whereas if you go and stare at a light bulb, that's a whole nother story. We at Brody Robertson don't endorse staring at light bulbs or other bright objects. Any harms or effects that may occur are down to your lack of intelligence. So one of the main purposes of HDR is to better demonstrate those intensity levels, those brightness levels, to give you a much more dynamic range. But one of the main issues with supporting HDR is HDR isn't as simple as saying this display is a 4K display, this display has FreeSync. HDR is actually a bunch of competing standards. You have things like HLG, HDR10, HDR10+, Dolby Vision, all of which do have open implementations except for Dolby Vision. And with all that in mind, if you want to support HDR, you need full stack support, all the way down from the kernel up to your user applications. And this is where we start seeing a little bit of hope, because in the drivers, it's actually a pretty good state. So all the way back in Linux kernel 5.3, Intel updated their graphics drivers to have HDR support, and the same thing happened over on AMD. Now, I don't believe the NVIDIA drivers have support for HDR currently. That might be a mistake on my part, but the newest thing I could find in reference to HDR and NVIDIA is this forum post from about three years ago. So if anybody has any more info on that, please let me know down below and I'll pin it in the comment section. And as for the application support, this is also in a pretty decent state as well. So both Kodi and MPV being video players actually support HDR playback. Now in the case of Kodi, it's pretty easy to get working in MPV. The documentation is scattered all over the place, good luck trying to do it there. Now the way these need to be run is completely different from what you're probably thinking. You don't just go and run them on Xorg or Wayland and then be good to go. That is going to break the HDR. We'll talk about that in just a moment. You need to go and run these applications directly with the DRM, the Direct Rendering Manager, basically telling the application to speak directly with the GPU drivers, completely ignoring having any desktop. And when we're talking about applications like Kodi, there are distros that you can download right now and install on your system at this very moment that help you go and do this. This is the documentation for LibreELEC. Basically, it is a home theater PC distro. It is as stripped down as possible just to make Kodi work and running through the DRM and you can play back HDR content perfectly fine. But there are apparently some issues with 4K plus HDR. I don't know why 4K itself is causing problems, but it is what it is. Things like tone mapping isn't available in Kodi yet, so if you play HDR content on an SDR screen, it's going to look really washed out and just not the way it should. The on-screen display is going to be really bright and saturated because you can't mix HDR and SDR content. 
Dolby Vision is supported on the Android client, but not on the Linux client. So that's a problem with FFmpeg and Dolby Vision not being open. But you can play back the HDR content if you have not Dolby Vision and you have the correct hardware. Now, avoiding Xorgan Wayland is incredibly important because this is where the chain breaks. There's a reason why I said full stack support. You need that driver support, you need that application support, but you also need support from the desktops and the display server. Let's start with Xorg because this is where all of your hope goes to die. So HDR is still a relatively new tech. The first HDR displays that were like tech demos were all the way back in 2003, but it didn't really enter the public discussion until 2014 with HDR TV. Whereas X11, that was created in 1984, and then Xorg, which is a fork of X3D6, was created in 1991, long before HDR was even a concept anybody was discussing. But code can obviously change, so why hasn't it? Why doesn't Xorg have support for HDR? Well, that's kind of the issue. It's open source, and nobody cared to do that implementation. So there is actually an open issue about supporting HDR. When will you support HDR? And the first response actually explains it pretty well. When is perhaps not the best question to ask, since the answer is when someone implements it, which is not super helpful. Nobody is actively working on HDR support in X as far as I know, so there's not an expected due date. A better question would be, what needs to be done to support HDR? And there is some discussion of a deep color protocol extension to enable X clients to send HDR content to the server. This is from 2017, and not really much has happened with it since then. It got a couple of replies, and that's pretty much it. It never properly got implemented, so we're sort of where we are now. Personally, I don't have any interest in trying to make any of that work with Xorg, i.e. hardware-backed server. I'd be adding it to X Wayland, if anything, which means if I end up being the one who gets around to writing the HDR support, it won't be until after it's working in Western and or Mutter, preferably both. Now, that takes us perfectly over to the Wayland side, where there actually is a little bit of hope, and it is actively being worked on. So this right here is the roadmap, and things are actually being checked off the list. Not, you know, every single day, but things are being worked on, along with there being a protocol extension that adds in a color management protocol. This is from two years ago, but as we can see, there is a lot of discussion about how it should work, what it should do, all of that fun stuff, all the way up to like a couple of days ago. So this is still actively being developed. It's not just a thread that was made and just left to die. And there's a very good reason why it wasn't just left to die. So you may have seen this article from Phronix last year about Red Hat hiring a bunch of developers to work on HDR. They're not the only ones involved. AMD also has done pretty much the exact same thing and have been doing for a very long time at this point. Like, they've been doing this for a couple of years. Also, this is a good thing, in Western 11.0, there is some basic preparation for HDR support in Western. Continued work on color management infrastructure. Most of this stuff here, we don't care about. Furthermore, you can configure a monitor into HDR mode and deliver HDR characteristics from Western INI to the monitor, but Western will not produce proper HDR content yet, meaning the display is incorrect. It is able to pass along some of that data, even though it is not able to properly make use of it in its current state. This is a baby step, this is a first step, but a really important step. And Mutter, the backend for GNOME, has an open discussion issue, a roadmap, basically just a set of things that need to be worked on, along with a merge request, breaking things down into various stages. Phase 1, HDR metadata passed through for full screen surfaces, a surface being a window, a full screen window. Phase 2, GL shaders, 
and KMS path to modify the content based on metadata, and then phase three, support multiple surfaces. And right now they're working on phase one. Some of these things have been merged like this one here, but the vast majority are still very much in the works. While possibly exciting, still a very long way away, but this is a project that already exists, is already established, but there is a new project coming along that is being built with HDR support from the start. That being the desktop that System76 is making, their new Cosmic Rust DE. So one of the things they say they're going to do from the start is work on HDR support. Now, whether they can do it or not is a whole nother question, but they say they want to do so. What I do really hope is they participate with Upstream Wayland to bring this to the Linux Wayland desktop, not just having HDR in their new product. I know they're going to want to get people trying out the Cosmic desktop and, you know, buying their hardware and using their software and all that fun stuff, but for the sake of improving Linux, I really hope they do help Upstream. No matter what video I'm doing, no matter what I'm talking about, I feel like I just keep repeating this. 2023 is going to be a really exciting year for Linux. There are so many massive features coming for Wayland, it's actually getting to the point where Wayland is legitimately going to have everything that people want. Now, there is always going to be those holdouts and some people who are just going to keep using Xorg, and that's fine. But for everybody else, we're almost there. Maybe a year, maybe two years, maybe three years, but we can see the end goal. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Do you care at all about HDR? Do you use an HDR display right now and then like, you know, run it in SDR mode? Are you going to buy one when Linux eventually supports it? Or I don't know, maybe you just have HDR on a Windows system and you're good to go. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of, I forgot my outro, these amazing people over here. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Patreon, Libera Pay, that stuff. Uh, I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brother Optum Plays. That's going to be it for me. And that's when that happens.